Thank you to all our viewers and supporters for literally making these videos possible and uh, we hope you enjoy them and keep enjoying them in the future. We now finally returned home to our own sailboat in Esperado, to all the crucial tasks that had been neglected for a period of time that had now accumulated into months. We were finally laying out the new electric cables donated to us a while back by our patron Brian. And Robbie started drilling out the holes in our electrical backbone, where we would be installing the lights and electronics. They cut to the wire, but they don't cut to the plastic. Keep the left of that piece. Together we stuffed the first cable up into the backbone tube. And then we pulled in a second, third, and fourth cable up alongside the initial one, with the help of some duct tape. This is going to be forward, middle, and a kitchen and, and power, and this is going to be nav light, anchor light, and deck light. Our electrical system on the boat was going to be a quite simple one for now, as we ran the ends of the cables to our handmade electrical box and panel. Robbie's doing some wiring right now. We've uh, got the engine like sitting in there but we've got to cut the whole area and put the feet on put the the mounts on and the mounts are are being shipped to scott right now so it's all coming together we spoke to our friend gene robbie was plotting to go visit him in baja california where we had a bunch of boat gear waiting for us in his boat and more parcels coming in by the mail So for now, we have a Spartan system consisting of a switch panel, which is of course just the buttons, wired to a fuse box. Why are there fishing wires? Which adds an element of safety to the system. And there is a bus bar as well, which grounds the negative wires. And he's using his favorite tool here, the humble lighter. However, ideally one could use a hot air gun to shrink wrap these cable end fittings. And we do our best to keep all the cables snug and clean and strapped together. We weren't having much luck charging our ancient and completely neglected lead acid battery on the boat, so we would have to recycle this one. Meanwhile, at our new corner spot here in the canal, wind and current was pushing all the plastic debris right up next to our hull on the dock. Is it a futile task to catch just a tiny pinch of this plastic garbage floating around the boat? Or is it worth collecting the garbage into a plastic bag and bringing it to the curb daily? I ask myself while cleaning it all up. I'm also being defeated by the seemingly fruitless effort to keep the bottom and sides clean of this vessel that has not had her bottom freshly painted in possibly decades. What was working was hauling the new engine up and down using the boom halyard like a crane. We did this several times to determine exactly how it would be mounted in the engine compartment. Let's see how it's lining up. It's still very, very high. It has to come down way down. We're gonna have to cut. We would have to do a lot of cutting to rebuild the supports so that the narrow body of the new engine will have something sturdy to perch on. But just as we were about to get down and dirty grinding in the bilge, something incredible happened. One of our immensely generous viewers offered to update not only our GoPro cameras for shooting our underwater footage, but also he sent us a brand new setup of camera gear and a computer. The only catch is that shipping it to our location here in Mexico is of course complicated, so we would have to go pick it up. Robbie volunteered to take the big plane to Baja, where he would meet up with our friends and collect some of that other boat gear, the film gear, and everything else that was being held there for us. The scenery all the way to Cancun Airport consists mainly of ultra-luxury resort hotels, one after another, in almost an unbroken chain all along the coastal highway. Thank 
drinking giant things of coke before getting on the plane. This is Tijuana. It's surprisingly colder than I remember that. And I can see the states on the other side. But yeah, that's the US. And now we're gonna go meet Scott, which we haven't seen in a long time. Yeah! What is it called again? Perfect blue? No, is it called? No, perfect. Brilliant blue. Brilliant blue. That's we got Scott here on the wheel. Our friend Scott, who bought and traveled in our first boat, my way, and then upgraded to a larger sailboat like us, was taking a land vacation and doing the van life thing with his family for a while. As much as Robbie and I loved traveling around the peninsula of Baja by sailboat, we were definitely keen on trying the land trip around the area as well. So I just love that Robbie was getting the chance now to do a very abbreviated trip with Scott. This is camping in Baja California. This cliffside campsite offered these cone-shaped huts for rent, but Robbie enjoyed his stay in the easy breezy tent. They look exactly like magic mushies, but they haven't turned blue, especially this one. That one looks just like one. The gang tried out our new video making and photography equipment. And I could tell that Uncle Robbie was having a blast visiting our good friends that we hadn't seen in too long. There's like all these nice fire pits. I think these are olive trees. They look like olive trees. It seems to be a, like olive pits. So I think these are olive trees and it's full of rabbits and... Everyone was on a pretty tight budget and schedule. So right away it was off to La Paz for Robbie to go visit more friends now. Robbie says, it was weird to fly all over the many incredible anchorages that we'd taken months to explore over the span of less than two hours. He arrived in the desert town by the sea and was in the anchorage with our trusty friend Jean within 30 minutes of landing. There was also another important fellow to go meet in La Paz. We'd never met him in person before, but we knew his vessel quite well. Look at her, she's looking gorgeous. Oh, I like her white. Nestled in among the super yachts, there they found her. It was not easy to recognize our little red boat Rosa anymore with her new snazzy paint job. Now, I was gonna put a, a, a 40 pound rock now on this boat in the front, or 15 kilo rock now. Yeah. But Robbie did recognize his old Dyneema Splice lifelines right away. I love these because when you're past the Genova sheet, you can just open and... Ah, exactly. They're still super tight. Look at that. And I'm glad none, none of it has been coming out. And you see how it's, it's, how it's done here? You notice how I didn't use the, the ring? Yeah. How this yeah, loops in. goes over and this one goes under yeah. so this one and this one are not relying on the steel they're pulling on it on each other and he ogled at her still good looking rigging he checked the state of the running rigging and the general state of the mast almost all the other ropes are doing good i remember that noise For the boat. 
And although it can be difficult to find a good sturdy paint for boats here in Mexico sometimes, the hardware, fiberglass, and G10 elements were holding up well. It's still nice and straight. Our box is still doing really good, our G10 box. There's no cracking, no more deck compression. Even the little cuts we cut out are still doing great. They're not chafing the line, it allows the line to pass smoothly. It doesn't have a scratch on her, it's amazing. You have to tighten your, your bar a little bit. Yeah, yeah, you have to put maybe a washer. Line is still doing really good. You're still sitting here watching over the boat, huh? You were worried about uh, you saying is my thing coming down, but it looks better than than when I was dealing with it. I think you're all good here. This whole area was rotten and sagging years ago, but it looks as though the G10 plating had worked to minimize deck compression. Now, no issue. Not a drop of water in the bilge. No cracking up front on that either. Still got ding. The only area that Robbie could spot some trouble. We kind of had a little bit of had a little bit of cracking. Was the one area that I remember not enough fiberglass cloth had been applied. Lesson of the day. Do not be stingy with materials in your fiberglassing job. The darling little pram dinghy was looking as spiffy as ever, with our friend Roberto having just added some new layers of protective paint. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I fixed the soft spots on the side it had. It's for new rigging, it's completely rebuilt it, it's amazing. Look at it, look at it. Wow, look at that jean. Oh, I Is love it. it, it's beautiful. I like how fast it goes. It's super weird, like the sharp angles and... Yeah. There was some experimentation with the new camera gear that our supporter Sean had sent to us. I'm using this, this bomb for the first time. <laughs> Ravi and Jean explored around the lovely La Paz. Jean being the tourist. But then the vacation was coming to an end. Oh my god, it's like quite a serious Bougainville. The hardest part would be to return home again with all the gifts. I bought a ticket online and it canceled. They sent the money back to the bank last second. So then I have to buy another ticket. And yeah, charge me the double, so it's okay. We had also been gifted a tiny two horsepower outboard engine to bring to our sailboat. But despite cleaning and polishing it and reading the policies carefully, the airline would not let us bring it home. So the engine would end up staying with our friend Gene, and he bought Robbie's ticket back home since they bumped him from the flight without warning. Oh, airlines, this is why we want to sail. Look at the look in his eyes. 